right, we're going to just keep moving right along. We're fixing to get another report on the military interventions by the Biden administration, the retaliation in the Middle East. But before we do that, let's talk to Caroline Downey, National Review reporter. Let's talk to Joe Concha, Fox News contributor. Um, boy, there's a lot going on. Yeah. The bombing. Let's start. I want to get to the jobs report, which mm -hmm. was a shocker, too. And the economy does play a big role in the election, although one month is not to make a thing. But um, what does this bombing do? Good or bad? Because this, this may be a double-edged sword. Well, I think lots of military experts have, you know, commented on this prior. And basically, the, you know, my summary is that Biden, every time that the U.S. forces in Syria and Iraq have been targeted or attacked, which is over 158 times, Biden's response has always been delayed and tit for tat. Mm. It's been a very calculated, strategic hit on infrastructure or property, mm -hmm. but it hasn't been disproportionate enough to really be deterring to the actual sponsor of this terrorism and militancy, which is Iran. So, you know, this, maybe it'll hit him where it hurts, but uh, I'm afraid that, you know, we've already waited too long, and Biden's already showed a lot of his cards, which Trump was the expert in uh, not doing that. There's a little bit of element of surprise to military operations. Yeah, boy, this was, right, this is the most advertised, not the specifics, but you could just see uh, these militias, these Iranian-type militias running to, to the motherland, which is Iran, Joe, which is kind of my problem. When you say hit them where it hurts, really, I, I'm not sure we're hitting them where it hurts. Right, exactly. Uh, the element of the of surprise was not here yeah. in, in this case. And we just seem to be the day late and dime short mm. administration. Mm. Remember what Joe Biden has been saying for months. Whenever he was asked the question, what are you going to do about Iran and its proxies using our U.S. servicemen and women and our ships as target practice in the Red Sea? He'd look at the camera and he'd say, don't. And that would be it. You're like, what does that mean? Don't. Right. I, I guess you're trying to be tough in this situation. The bottom line is that we lost Afghanistan and that horrible withdrawal, and that sent a message to the world that we were disorganized and not ready. We saw Ukraine get invaded by Russia when that did not happen during the Trump administration, and China has never been as aggressive in its posture towards Taiwan as we're seeing now. So these strikes are good, but they're a day late and about two weeks short. Yeah, it looks like it. Um, Caroline, the jobs number today was twice what the consensus expected. And the last six months, <clears throat> and I'm going to say this as a conservative, mm -hmm. and as you know, Joe Biden is not my favorite presidential candidate, I will say that as well. But the fact is, the facts are, the economy appears to be picking up steam, and the jobs report shows that again today. Now, is there political content in this? Does this remove an election year issue or what? Larry, like you said, we can celebrate good news as a country. However, as you said in your opening monologue, voters do not necessarily feel the effects of macroeconomic indicators. Yeah. They feel prices, and prices are still very high despite moderating mm -hmm. inflation. I mean, poverty skyrocketed in 2022. Real household incomes dropped by thousands of dollars, I believe, I believe between pre-pandemic levels under Trump and 2022. Credit card debt is still surging. So, I mean, the Biden administration may appeal to these abstractions, mm. but it doesn't hit home for most Americans. I love that. Uh, economics, the whole thing's an abstraction. What am <laughs> I doing here? <laughs> Joe, what do you think? I mean, because it's, you know, I, I'll say this again. A lot of my conservative friends want to blow holes through this report, but this sure. is a good report. It's a good report. It's a solid report. And um, I would guess... If Joe Biden gets his act together, he can sell it on the road. Well, does it move the needle, however? Yeah, that's the question. In terms of the things that matter, grocery prices are still up 25% over the past mm -hmm. four years, and they continue to rise. Gas prices are up 30% since this president took office. These are things people feel because these are things that they buy on a daily basis. Electric bills, home heating bills still continue to rise. So you could talk about the unemployment rate still being below four, but that's what it was under President Trump until the COVID years. Mm -hmm. So when you say the economy is getting better, in terms of the things that people feel, they're not feeling it. Here's a Gallup poll, by the way. Two-thirds of voters, this is just from this week, say the economy is getting worse, not better. That's mm -hmm. two-thirds. Yep. About two-thirds also say that, quote, high prices pose a severe or moderate financial hardship to them, unquote. Yep. So they could sell it as much as they like, but don't oversell it because people will say, no, 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 that's not what we're feeling here at home and not what we're seeing in our bank. I will say this. we got to get out. Uh, you're wonderful to come today in a crowded news day, but I'll say this. If these good, quote, unquote, economic numbers continue uh, through the spring into the early summer, it's going to help Biden. If they don't, it won't. That's just, people will make up their mind ahead of time We'll see if it's sustainable or not.
Caroline Downey, National Review. Your boss was here yesterday, my dear friend Rich Lowry and Joe Concha. Thank you. Appreciate it very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks.